Today I want to deep dive into two different things of LLMs, the large language models. We're going to talk about what the model in itself is, and we're also going to see the different kinds of models that we are dealing with. So before we begin, I would like to first emphasize the reason why I'm making this video. See, a lot of misconceptions are there. So I want to say, first of all, what is the large language model that we are dealing with? What does it even mean, a large language model? So I thought, yeah, let me make a video where I'll explain how the model is or what the model is, what is the basic form of it. And then we'll look at what kind of models that we're dealing with in the LLM world currently. And before we begin with anything else, I would like to quickly show you a demo that I built probably many, many years ago. A long time ago, people were interested in natural language processing, NLP. NLP, natural language processing comes from information theory or information retrieval, IR. Now, a part of an NLP, a subset of an NLP was quite interested in NLG, natural language generation. So making machines write like humans would write. And part of the project back in the day, people were using Markov chain to do this. And there was a Python library. You can still try it. I ran this code sometime back. So you can use Markov I without any model, like no model is being built at all to generate a text that can be like humans. It is as good with the text that you provide. Let me first show you an example. So as you can see here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create machine generated headlines. So this is just simply going to be machine generated headlines. So you have a headline like tuna form approval sets for something, something live blog bill shorten appears on the insiders. So as you can see here, these are the sentences that almost looks like human generated, but this is machine generated. How does it work? Very, very simple. So first of all, you start with the state and then you trans there is a transition that is happening. And at every transition, you decide which state you want to go to just purely based on the current state. You start with this, you go to one and then at that point you calculate some probability and all the other things. And then you see what you want to do. And based on that, you start designing what the output is kind of predicting what the output is. Mm -hmm. And then you give the output back. And this is exactly what Markov chain was doing back in the day. And uh, I would say like, this is one of my most popular projects at that point. I had created like tweet generator at that point and people loved it. And not just me, a lot of people used it. And you can see the idea is quite simple. You don't build a model. You don't build anything. You have states and transitions and at every point you decide where do you want to go next based on the previous text and then you go there. And that is how it artificially generates headlines. This is a language generation. Now let's expand it a little bit. Okay. So now you saw there was no model, just purely Markov chain, like probabilities and other stuff. Now, if you expand it a little bit, where can you go? I've got another very good animation from a blog called Lena Voita. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct, but it is an excellent representation of what is happening. Before I show you the representation of what is happening, I want to take you through a quiz. So do you know what this word means? Tez, Guino, I don't know what language it is. Do you know what does it mean? You're, I mean, at least I do not know. Okay. So now let's see how our brain works. So now look at all these sentences in uh, that the word is being used, but in different context and guess whether this word would make anything to you. A bottle of taste Guino on the table. Okay. Now I can understand probably it's a liquid. It's on the table mm -hmm. and everyone likes a taste Guino. Cool. Taste Guino makes you drunk. We make taste Guino out of corn. Can you understand what it could mean? It makes you get drink, drunk, it's made out of corn. It's of course a liquid and it is on the bottle uh, table. People like it. What could it be? It's some kind of an alcoholic beverage made from corn. How did you guess it? Because you took this word from all the different context and then your brain started mapping it. What it started mapping it? It started creating an embedding out, out of this. Like that's what we're going to go see. And then from that embedding, you have a bunch of vocabulary, uh, which is the word that is. And from that embedding, it is mapping. So it's called distributional hypothesis, but here we're going to see how a neural network could probably see 
once again we are not talking about large language models but i want to give you the fundamental picture of what could be happening and i'll also show you how it connects so if you see what we are seeing here is something called word embeddings in word embeddings you have these words these individual words the most fundamental unit of a language and uh, word is not the fundamental unit of language i can you know you can say that the character is but let's say word the words are represented mathematically or arithmetically like words are converted into some numeric format because ultimately you know this is what we are doing is made <coughs> ultimately what we are doing is matrix multiplication so at the end of the day you have to represent things in terms of numbers so you are taking the words representing them into numbers and once you represent them, them into numbers what you create is an embedding okay some kind of number system what numbers could mean one and two are closer one and 100 are farther so that is the basic notion with numbers one and two are closer one and 100 are farther now that means there could be two words that are similar two words that are dissimilar now with that thing if you see here this particular animation here at least the neural network you send i saw a cat and the neural network in this case is the language model what the language model is doing it knows the first first word it knows the second word and it knows the third word the moment it knows the third word it knows to go here look up for what would be the probable fourth word so it goes to your embedding dimension and you have got a vocabulary size like the list of words it should look into and from that it is going to pick one of the most probable word and it is going to give you if you are familiar with most recent models like open ai large language models you know there is something called sampling happening at the end and that sampling is exactly like this it's going to sample a bunch of words and one of the word will have the higher probability the second one will have the second highest probability in fact there are certain visualizations that can show you all the words so this in the simplest format is what a language model is a language model is an algorithm or a structure or an object that understands the basic nuances of the given text mm -hmm. and creates some kind of let's say an embedding or a, some kind of model that understands for the entire amount of text that you have given about what to do so this is a language model it has a language understanding how it is connected something like a spider's web you know how your brain processes certain amount of things now if you see this vocab size or embedding dimension this might sound a little familiar why if you go to any of the model so i've gone to llama 3 chat qa from nvidia if you go to any of the model one of the things that you are going to see here is the vocab size that means llama 3 model can sample from 128256 tokens and it has got an embedding dimension of 8192 which is kind of what translates into the context size so what we see there as the fundamental part is exactly what is happening with large language models so now what is completely switch from all the historic large language model interesting information that i gave you and jump into what is happening in today's world in today's world we are dealing with two primary types of model one is called a base model the second one is called a fine-tuned model if you already know this what is a base model what is a fine-tuned model you don't have to watch this video anymore just comment hey nice job or if you don't like it just say whatever bad it is you can stop it but if you do not know it is very important for you to know this thing because this is something that i've noticed a lot of people do not understand and they straight away jump into ai use cases when you have when you do not have enough proper data backed knowledge like the factual knowledge then it is trouble so that's why i decided to make this video so you have raw data from internet you know from wikipedia stack overflow reddit all the forums and all those things you take the raw data and you clean the data raw data that's very important right because now you might have deduplication you might have misinformation uh, you might have all those things so you do all those things you remove all those things after you do that you put it together into a process called pre training this process is what creates a model called base model or you can call it even training uh, depending upon what school of thought you come from but what you get at the end is called either a brace base model or you can call it a pre trained model so what is a pre trained model or a base model it is the same language model we just saw 
but at a much a larger size with different architectures now i'm getting slightly technical in this video uh, bear with me what do we mean by different architectures one of the most popular machine learning or nlp architecture is t5 from google this is technically a text to text model architecture and it is also an encoder and decoder architecture so if you see t5 you will see two components one is you will see an encoder and you will see a decoder so but most of the large language models these days that you see are only decoder based models so something for you to keep in your mind not very important so it uses one of these machine learning architectures and tries to create the representation that we just discussed in the previous section and it creates that particular model that you can ultimately get download it keep it in your phone keep it in your laptop and then use it this is what your base model is so you have raw data clean it up use some kind of architecture like open ai use gpts gpt as a architecture google have previously used t5 we have had like bert lot of different architectures some are encoder decoder architecture some are just decoder architecture and then the final output is a base model but what a base model can do this is what a base model can do you give a text the capital of kenya is that's what you give that is what the user gives now the base model or what we call fancyly as ai today can give you the answer as nairobi if the model is good it will give nairobi if the model is let's say terribly bad it will probably give you new delhi or something but some other capital rather than giving randomly like coca cola it's not going to give you coca cola there i mean i mean it has to be extremely stupid to give you coca cola there but either it will give you the right answer nairobi or it will give you the wrong answer but still a capital there and that is happening primarily because that is how a large language model or a language model works and we have just seen that example now this language model was what we had at the start before even the concept of question and answering existed we used to use this model to do everything gpt2 was a model like this how for example we would go and then say something like this okay question um, what is the capital of india uh, answer it's new delhi like this will give you couple of examples after giving couple of examples we will send like this question what is the capital of kenya or instead of that sorry we'll say the capital of kenya is and then we expect the model to give us the answer back by filling in next you can either say what is the capital of or you can say it like this but the idea is you take the model that is trained to predict next word but by changing the prompt which is what became prompt engineering you can make the model do certain other things and that is exactly what this google paper actually explains you not this paper the other paper so if you see this google paper you can see that it shows this model can do translation this model can answer questions this model can do summarization and these like the translation uh, summarization question and answering these are called downstream nlp task what is it called downstream nlp tasks so that means these large language models the base models the pre trained models are good for downstream nlp tasks cool now but we didn't want to stop there ultimately our aim is to build something that can answer our questions and that is how people started taking base model and then started doing something called ift instruction fine tuning so fine tuning these models with instruction data set and that model would now answer questions what kind of data sets for that you need fine tuning data there are couple of formats that are quite popular back from back in the day uh, from that time one is an alpaca format that was introduced by stanford then the other one is the share gpt format i'm not going into all the details like showing you every single example the idea is to guide you what to learn more and some kind of alignment would happen like what kind of alignment would happen something like let's say rlhf or uh, hf or um, dpo ppo some kind of alignment process will happen and then at the end of the day you have a fine tuned model with you available so if meta releases llama 3 for example meta usually releases a llama 3 that is a base model and meta also releases a llama 3 that is a fine tuned model sometimes it's usually called llama 3 instruct sometimes it's called llama 3 base sometimes this is further fine tuned for chat it's called llama 3 chat so the two models that we have got is the base model and a fine tuned model 
and if you have got questions let's say you know how does this thing even work like for that i would strongly encourage you to go read about something called transfer learning if you want to know the one of the core principles of how this entire thing is working not from the language model perspective generally how is it possible to train a deep learning model that can do one thing but make it do certain other things then you should definitely go read about transfer learning which is a very interesting concept for you to know about but at this point we have two kinds of models a base model and the fine tuned model one of the important reasons why i wanted to make this video is because people don't often realize what kind of things you can do with one of these models for example let's say you are a company and you want to ask question and you want get answer you need to without any question you need to use fine tune model but let's say you are a company and you want to build your own model at this point i would strongly encourage you to pick up any base model rather than using a fine tune model unless until the fine tune model has got a lot of domain specific information otherwise you might be taking one fine tune model and then fine tuning it for a different case and that is exactly what happens in the industry now like a lot of different organization cognitive computations news research a lot of other people they release fine tune model sometimes they take the base model and sometimes they take the fine tune model and that is what this particular section is if you have an existing model how can you improve the model one first step is called continued pre training or it's also called cpt you take a model rather than fine tuning the model you continue the pre training process with new tokens with new data so that the model learns more the second step is what people take the base model or the fine tune model you can have either of these models and then use new fine tuning data and then fine tune it using all the other techniques that we have got these days in fact sometimes people also do something like lora and then fine tune it and then finally you have got alignment like dpo rlhf ppo and then you get a new model the reason why people do this is because people believe that in this process in this particular process like what they are doing here is they can infuse a domain specific knowledge okay while this is extremely contested it's some people agree some people do not agree while there is no consensus that domain specific knowledge can be in uh, infused inside a large language model one thing that you need to understand is at the end of the day fundamentally this is all english and this english the large language model is understanding different patterns so why do you want to do fine tuning so you want to do fine tuning one of course when you want to do something like this right so you don't want to go say the capital of kenya is and then you don't want the model to give you Ken uh, nairobi as an output you want to ask a question with a certain role so you have a role called user the user asks a question what is the capital of kenya the role assistant now fills in this answer the capital of kenya is nairobi and then gives you the answer back so you want something like this to happen so what do you see here you see a format so if you want to do some kind of formatting then you of course need to do fine tuning there is another very interesting world called steerability steerability so you also want to do to steer it in a particular direction so you want to guide the prompting in a particular direction that can actually help you in giving you something back so if you are a brand if you want the large language model to learn certain formats and of certain styles certain techniques that you usually use within your brand then you need to do fine tuning knowledge infusing is a totally different topic it's for some other day but my intention is to explain the difference between the base model and fine tune model and i hope you have some better understanding of fundamentally what is a large language model what is a language model what is a large language model and how does a base model different from a fine tune model i wanted to give you a slightly brief guide and i've thrown a lot of jargon so maybe you have to like go back and then see but i hope this helps you in taking some direction and learning the fundamentals while people are building at the application layer if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section otherwise i'll give you certain reading links in the youtube description for you to try it out see you in another video happy prompting